In the previous video, you learned how to apply and work with dissolves or wipes between two shots. Now let's step this up a level and start looking at applying effects directly onto segments in the sequence. We'll first start off with learning how to apply them using some of the tools, the effects editors and rendering your effects. First start off by selecting your segment in the sequence. You can apply a timeline effect in a few ways. You can click on the Effects button in the toolbar and this will bring up the Effects ribbon. If you prefer a keyboard shortcut, press Ctrl Tab to also bring up the Effects ribbon. From within the Effects ribbon, you can choose the effect you want to apply to the selected segment. Say for instance, I choose the Axis effect. The toolbar above the sequence now displays an effects pipeline for that segment. You read the pipeline from left to right. So starting on the left, you have all the media processing options for the segment. Towards the middle of the effects pipeline, you will see the timeline effects like the axis effect. The more effects you add onto the segment, the longer the effects pipeline. One point to mention is that if I call up the effects ribbon, you will be able to see the order in which the timeline effects will be applied to the segment. In other applications, this might be called the render order. With the exception of connect effects, a segment will always be first affected by a time warp, followed by a resize and going all the way up to the right to the last timeline effects axis. This pipeline order cannot be changed in its current state. That is where Connect Effects comes in, which you will see in a later video. Finally, on the right of the effects pipeline, you get the final result that is ultimately displayed in the segment edited in the sequence. Beneath the effects pipeline is the basic parameters bar for the selected timeline effects. If you have more than one timeline effects applied to a segment, you can click on the relevant timeline effects in the effects pipeline and their basic parameters will appear. So with the axis selected in the effects pipeline, you're able to do quick adjustments without going into an advanced editor. But remember that the basic controls will only get you so far. At some point, you will need to go into the effects editor. You can enter into the effects editor by clicking the editor button or double clicking on the segment. Here you will be exposed to the full breadth of the tools that the timeline effects have to offer. We'll come back to each one in more detail. But for now, to exit the effects editor, you would press the exit button to the left of the screen or press the tilde keyboard shortcut. To mute a timeline effects, click on the blue LED. Please note that when the timeline effects is muted, it does not require any rendering. Smoke refers back to the original media. Clicking the Render button will not do anything. To re-enable the timeline effects, click on the LED again. This might unrender any previously rendered effects. You can try pressing Command Z to undo the operation to recover the rendered media. To delete the timeline effects, you can right click on it and choose Delete. Or click the Delete button at the far right of its parameters. Alternatively, you can grab the timeline effects from the effects pipeline and drag it to the bottom of the screen until you see the trash can icon. Coming back to the actual segment in the sequence, you can see the dotted line at the top. This indicates a partially rendered timeline effects. The partial render in the segment could refer to just one frame under the positioner or multiple frames in the segment. At some point, this entire clip will need to be rendered. If you step through the segment with the arrow keys, Smoke will render the frames as it advances from one frame to the next. The rendered section of the segment is a solid black line that you can scrub and see the result. To completely render a segment, you would press the Render button. Smoke will only render the remaining frames that require processing. If you wish to re-render the entire clip again, you can click on the drop-down menu and choose Force Render. 
This will ignore any previous renders and re-render all the effects in the selected segment. Brand new media will be created to replace the old render files. If you encounter a solid white line on a segment, it simply means that the segment is unrendered and you will get an unrendered message in the Record Viewer when you scrub the segment. Another useful technique to know about is that you can apply timeline effects to virtual segments in the sequence. These are called gap effects. In other applications you might refer to this as an adjustment layer. To create a gap effect you can create a new video track above the edit or use an existing one. Now even though there does not appear to be anything on the track, you can still select the empty area and Smoke selects the empty gap segment. You can splice the segment by pressing Ctrl V to add cuts and then apply a timeline effects to the gap segment. The benefit of this is that the timeline effects is separated from the edit on the underlying video tracks. You could use the gap effect to apply a title across multiple shots or you could apply a colour correction to the gap effect. This means you could grade your sequence but still rearrange the edit. In the next video we will use a timeline effects to create a moving 2D title in the sequence.